today I'm out at the Chef's Armory uh, with Lee, who's the owner of Chef's Armory. He's going to give us the edge on getting an edge. So, uh, I brought some my crappy old knives from when I was an apprentice. Can you fix them? Benjamin, I can fix almost any knife. You know, with a little bit of experience, you can sharpen a spoon. Really? Absolutely. So, so what's the process? How does it, what, what's the best way to get an edge? You know, there's all sorts of gadgets and widgets out on the market. Um, and to my way of thinking, they're just gadgets or widgets. The yeah. very, very best way to sharpen a knife is using synthetic Japanese water stones. Okay, three, three grades of commonly used stones. We have Arato, which is generally around a 400 to 800 grit stone. We have Nakato, which is the middle stone, or also a stone for daily use, around 1,000 grit. And Shiagato, which is a finishing stone, which will give a lovely, fine, mirror polish finish. Hey, let's, uh, let's get started. What's the process to, to, get the, uh, to get an edge on the knife? Okay, the water stones have been in the water for about 10 minutes now. I can see the bubbles have stopped coming up, so that means they're ready. So we'll start on the Arato, which is the uh, rough stone. Knife, 45 degrees to the stone, and up about 20 degrees. It's European style knife, so I think any, any finer an angle than that, it probably won't take the edge. So, when you push away, use firm pressure and come back with light pressure. I tend to like to overlap different areas of the knife as I go, although you can do the knife in one sweeping action. That, that's the way they taught, taught us in culinary college. Yes, yeah. to, to go that sort of sweeping action. So it's, it's, it's not a time thing, you don't have to sort of have seven minutes on one side and seven minutes on the other. It's really just getting a feel for the tool and, and where it is at a particular, particular stage of the sharpening, right? Yeah, what, what we're trying to do is uh, this is quite a badly worn knife. We're trying to oh, create. Oh, it's been well cooked. Sorry, Chef. Well, Sorry. well cut with. Okay. We're trying to get a, a V bevel on this knife, which is probably similar to the bevel that I had when you bought it. Sure. 36 years ago. <laughs> okay. So we'll wear away one side of the knife at that 20 degrees, and then we'll work on the other side of the knife. Okay. Now, how we tell that we've actually reached that midpoint? is that you'll be able to feel, feel a burr along the blade. So, opposite side to what you've been sharpening, run your thumb across, away from the blade, and you'll be able to feel a thin wire burr. It's not quite there yet. So you've got like this mud thing going on. What's the deal with that? Like that, is that just, are you wearing down the stone? Is that, is that what's happening? Yeah, the, the stone's like a brake pad, it wears out. Um, when you're rubbing the knife against the stone, it's, it's, it's wearing away at it, and it forms this paste. The paste is very important. That's what does the sharpening. So it's a bit like a lubricant, I guess, in many ways, is it? Is that, it just forms as a, like an oil, I guess? Like an oil. So instead of using an oil like you would on traditionally a, a, a wet stone or an oil stone, uh, the water mixes with the actual stone and creates a beautiful paste. It's, it's better to do it little and often. Because not everyone has a few hours to sharpen a set of knives. So, uh, in, a, in a professional kitchen, in a Japanese kitchen, they'll spend a little bit of time at the start of the shift sharpening the knives, getting them ready. Sometimes they do it at the end of the shift, so their knives are in absolute premium condition all the time. Yeah, I remember when I was working in Japan, it was like that. You know, the, sh the chefs take so much pride in their tools, and you know, over here, a lot of a lot of chefs don't really look after their tools very much, they leave them around. Whereas over there they, they put them away, they wash them away every night and actually really look after them. Okay, that's ready now, we have the bevel formed, so let's move on to the middle stone. This is a 1000 grit. What we'll do is we'll start on the side that uh, now has the bird, and we'll polish that. You know, most of the hard work's actually done. We've uh, made a new bevel for the knife. So all we're doing now is, is polishing that bevel and uh, working down that burr as well. It sounds smooth. The first, the first time you used it sounded like you were dragging the sand, you knife through some sand. But that sounds a bit smooth, and I'm sure the last one's going to be like you know, bringing it across on glass or something like that. Yeah, this, this is much smoother, and uh, even, even this stone will give a, a very slight mirror finish on the, on the edge of the blade, which uh, 
You can imagine that mirror finish will glide through something like a tomato very, very beautifully. You know, it always amazes me when you see these chopping boards, the ceramic chopping boards and the glass chopping boards. I mean, that just must absolutely kill the knives. Yeah, crazy. You have this knife with a really beautiful fine edge. If you, you cut on something, I even see young chefs, young guys in the kitchen, they cut against the stainless steel bench. That's, it's, it's crazy. What you do is you'll damage the edge of the knife, especially if you have a fine edge knife, like a Japanese knife, with a really, really fine bevel on the end. It's a great way to damage your knives. Uh, the best thing to chop on is a nice, soft, wooden board. So you were saying to me before that you have a lot of chefs that actually drop their knives in here, and they cheat, they, they drop them in and come back a few days later and then they're all done? Yeah, we, we get a lot of, we do offer an overnight service for a lot of chefs. Uh, they do come and see me one day and I'll pick up the next. Um, also, we get chefs from all around Australia posting knives, although that tends to be for repairs. So I've okay. got, dropped my favourite knife, can you fix it? Uh, yeah, so we do offer that service. Okay, I can feel a slight burr on that, so let's go over to the fine stone. You know, Benjamin, I'm going to spoil you today. This is the 3000 stone. This, this is the platinum service that a lot of people don't get. So, so you can get away with using the, the 1000? You know, 1000 is a good average stone to use on knives. Yes. Um, people talk about the, the teeth, which are the little micro, micro serrations that you probably you can't see with the naked eye. Um, and to, some people like a knife that's a little bit more coarse. I like a knife that's been polished to a very, very fine, fine mirror finish. Because when you cut something, you get such a good quality of cut, as opposed to just the cut. So, let's, let's give this a platinum service. Now this stone's very, very hard. You can hear it. It's, it's like dragging across glass, isn't it? it? It is. It feels like a piece of glass when we're going back and forth. Some people use a 3,000, a 6,000. I've heard of people using a 12,000. Maybe that's just a little bit nuts. And they're the same people that kill other people when you drop their knives? <laughs> <laughs> they are. They, they tend to be. All right. Now this is almost finished. I can feel that we just have that final burr on the opposite side to what we've sharpened. We have put a mirror finish on both sides. So we'll just take that burr off. Again, we're 20 degrees to the stone. And it's like cutting the water off the stone. In most cases, it'll take the burr off. A good trick as well is to get a nice fine steel. And you can just very, very gently run it over steel. And that should take any final burr off that you have. So we've done, this, we've done the stones now, let's talk about the steels. Now you've got two types here, you've got the steel, I guess, and then you've got a diamond steel. Tell us a bit about both and the differences and when you use which one for what. This is the diamond steel. And my old apprentice steel. We both have our apprentice tools here today. This is an old steel that I've had for uh, probably 20 years now. Um, it's worn in quite a bit, it's not very sharp anymore, but I, I like it because it'll put a, a nice smooth edge on the knife. So it's good for removing burrs. It's also good for uh, just honing that knife in between sharpening when I'm a little bit lazy or hung over. The, um, the deal with the steel is uh, it's not really a sharpening device, it's more a honing device. So again, we're going to go 20 degrees to the steel. You see some guys, they're going crazy, they're furious at going with the steel, and, and that's a great way to damage your knife because you'll slip, you'll scratch your knife, you might scratch yourself, things happen. You really don't need to apply a lot of pressure, you don't need to go all that fast. If the knife is already sharp, heel of the knife on the steel, 20 degrees, bring it through, opposite side. Do that a few times. Make sure you keep the bevel right. Normally it's enough just to realign any burrs that are there because uh, you can get a bit of a, a burr on a, on a thin knife. And if you don't feel comfortable doing it like doing it like that, you can always do it across like that, can't you? Yeah, that's how Grandma used to do it. 
What? Oh, thanks. Thanks for calling me grandma. Yeah, that's okay. Um, so, I mean, butchers carry their steel with them all the time. I mean, I know they're cutting meat and they, they, they've got a, um, you know, more of a, chefs have more of a cross section of things mm. they're cutting, whereas butchers are just cutting meat, which is quite, quite rigorous with a knife. Is that why they sort of, everything they cut? Thank you. There's a couple of reasons why the butcher would do that. Uh, because they're cutting through fat quite a bit, uh, you can get a little bit of fat on the knife and you want to remove it from the edge. Best way to do that is by running it on the steel because it'll strip it off nice and quickly so you can make that nice okay. cut. Now, you were saying before that this is your original apprentice steel. The diamond steels, do they, do they last as long or, I mean, professionally, what, two years maybe? I tend to find um, two things with diamond steels. They, they, they clog up a little bit. You can imagine they get little bits of metal and uh, junk from around the kitchen, a bit of oil. Um, good scrubbing brush and some hot soapy water is great for removing that. But when you find they're not cutting how you want them to, then it's time for a new one. A couple of years maybe. So Lee, when you've done, when you've sharpened your knife, or you know, how do you test to show it's sharp enough? You know, one of the best tests is uh, by getting a piece of newspaper, rip it along the grain because you want to cut along that grain. Here's a knife that I prepared earlier, and just look at that. If it slices through in a beautiful slicing action without getting caught, the blade's sharp. If, for instance starts to cut and then you can feel it drag a little bit, maybe you need to work a little bit harder. That's a good test, really. I mean, you can test on vegetables and all that kind of stuff, but that's an interesting test to show that your knife's super sharp opposed to sort of halfway there. It's probably one of the best tests of sharpness that I've ever found. Some other people drag it across the back of the fingernail, but I, I don't like the idea of getting a sharp knife and putting it away. No, I'm going to say, I don't really, mm, yeah. no, accidents do happen. So now Lee sharpened my knife. I think, he, I think the word to use is he saved my knife. Um, I'm going to give it a go. <laughs> Lee, thanks for the great insight today on how to sharpen knives. Not a, lot, a lot of chefs will find great um, inspiration in learning and knowing how to sharpen a knife properly and not doing a bodgy job. Um, but if, if you are a chef or you're a home cook and you want to drop your knives in for Lee to fix them up or save them, you can drop them into a chef's armory. Uh, if you're interstate, you can post them in. Details on the website. And they're for sale. Some of the ones behind us. Is... Yeah, tell us about that. We import directly from Japan and uh, we send them all around Australia and also ship internationally as well. And you said you had some Japanese customers as well. Strangely enough, yes. Um, it's, uh, I, I don't understand how that one works. Uh, they come from Japan and I ship them back, but uh, it, it does happen. It does happen. Excellent. All right, well, thanks a lot for today and um, I'll see you next time when I drop my knives in. Thank you. Thanks, Lee.